The Pokemon world is one of challenge, one of battle, and one of conflict. It's about high-stakes standoffs testing the bonds between trainers and their Pokemon, if you're into that sort of thing. And while it's certainly a mainstay of the franchise, there is so much more to Pokemon than battling. I think that oftentimes, people really narrow their perspective on the Pokemon world. We get so caught up in the training and the journeying and the battling that we forget the simple joys in life. Those being dressing up in a tutu and dancing on stage with a Garboder. Truly, that is the peak of a trainer's experience. Existence. Today, I want to examine the often neglected middle child of the Pokemon experience, Pokemon Contests. As a light refresher for anyone who has never played a game with contests in them or just ignored it, I don't blame you since I did too, Pokemon Contests are many games in which instead of beating the snot out of each other, Pokemon are judged based on conforming to preconceived notions of what societal stereotype they fall under. You do this by using moves, not for fighting, but for dramatic effect. To impress a panel, of judges. But if we're pulling the same logic that Pokemon uses to justify battling, then it's not really about the looks or comparing yourself to others. It's about strengthening your bond and perfecting your performance for your own self-improvement and happiness. Nah, this is a cutthroat world full of questionable rules and psychological warfare. You think becoming the champion is hard? You haven't even stepped into the terrifying minefield of performances. There are five categories based on general attributes. Coolness, beauty, cuteness, cleverness, and toughness. They are supposed to be diverse enough that each Pokemon can become a master in one or maybe two, but one Pokemon can't easily take all five. This isn't a part-time endeavor, this is your life now. You can't go back. You're gonna need an elite team of only the raddest, most tubular, most neato burrito Pokemon. Or you can pump them full of steroid, I mean Pokeblocks. These little guys have their own separate minigame in some versions. The math behind these things is pretty complex, but basically if you blend up some berries, spin them real fast, and force feed them to your team, they're going to start contests with a bigger lead. I would say that this is probably a legal performance boosting activity, but the machine is literally inside the lobby and a little girl gives you the materials. Should you trust her? Probably not, but the path to victory is laced, so you better start taking your meds. In all seriousness, don't do that stuff. Anyway, in Gen 4, blocks got replaced with Poffins, and in Gen 6, there was a significant overhaul. But in all totality, the foundational principles have stayed the same, expressing one feeling through all aspects of the Pokemon and the performance. After all the prep work is where things get serious, though. It is time. The first round is purely visual based, just how much your Pokemon exuberates their chosen category. How cool is your Lucario? How tough is your Swampert? How cute is your Mr. Mime? This determines the base number you'll be competing at for the rest of the contest. It's really important, but it's also pretty boring to be honest. Like, come on, everyone already knows that Basculin is the most beautiful Pokemon in existence. Do we really need to be doing this? I'm sure you think your Garnivore is great, and I'm sure you think your Melodic is majestic, but you just can't compare to the natural grace and allure of the red stripe bass boy. I've basically already won by entering. But that's not the only component of contests, or else my Basculin would have already won masters in every category. But no, there is in fact a second round. After all, this is a performance. An art! This is not based upon looks alone. There is craft and mastery. Well, as much craft and mastery that there can be in four buttons, which, in all honesty, is a surprising amount. Moves work better if they match the category you're participating in, which just makes sense, but there's also secondary effects that can make the opponent nervous and even lower their score. I can exhibit Basculin's true inner beauty and severely startle all its competition in one fell swoop by using hail. I imagine it's not necessarily because of the fact that it somehow started hailing inside, but because of the sheer class of the bass. That's not all though. Move combinations also play a major role. I can follow up hail with either Icy Wind to really cinch the victory by getting bonus hearts, and that's how I can objectively prove that Basculin is the most beautiful Pokemon to ever exist. There is no flaw in this logic, it is perfectly sound. Now that we've gone through this process, all that's left is to repeat it four more times with different movesets, natures, scarves, and Pokeblocks. Do you see how this is a lot harder than it seemed at the beginning? This is just as complex as battling, and I would argue that it is infinitely more hilarious. But if we take a step back from the jokiness at it all for a second, we can see the contest have actually had a major impact on the cultural development of
of the Pokemon world as a whole. In fact, they spawned a creative renaissance of dance and theater. What do I mean by this? Well, let's take a step back and re-examine all that we've gone over in the context of liberal arts students' favorite alternative assignment, interpretive dance. Yes, I am completely serious. But first, I need to go over the tenets of interpretive dance, because while I could be wrong, I suspect not every avid Pokemon fan is up to date on the historical context of dance in the 1940s, although they should be. One of the first people credited to bringing interpretive dance to the mainstream is Isadora Duncan, who has an insane life story that is worth a read on Wikipedia. But to keep it concise and relevant, she started adding more natural movement into her performances instead of the very rigid movement of traditional ballet. She then passed on her knowledge to future generations, and now, over a hundred years later, her impact is still felt in Broadway shows choreography. But what do 100 year old ballet dancers have to do with Pokemon contests? I'm getting to that. Basically, Pokemon contests did the same thing and inspired the Pokemon musical. But this isn't some loose correlation. I have evidence. I have built a case. I don't get out much anymore. Basically, there are three qualifying factors that lend credence to my claim. Both are used to convey emotion, both have flowing costuming, and both encourage a freeform style of expression. I'll start with the most obvious connection, the conveying of emotion. Interpretive dance is famous for its often exaggerated movements to the point of dancers collapsing on the floor. This is all in an effort to express specific emotions through body language, and Pokemon contests are no different. They're even separated by performance type. While the argument could be made that beauty and toughness are adjectives and not emotions, I think that the point lays more in conveying emotions of awe or fear to the audience. After all, it's their reaction that determines the result of the first round. If I'm not conveying the awe, brilliance, and allure of Basculin to everyone, I failed not only as a coordinator, but as a human being. Specific actions can be paired as well. Normally, intensely and menacingly staring down someone with murderous intent before literally exploding would be a horrific, traumatic experience. But on the stage, it becomes a beautiful expression of the chaotic nature of the world and the fragility of life. Imagine a pile of sludge doing that on a stage in front of a live audience and tell me you wouldn't weep. You can't. That's real emotion. That's interpretive dance! That's not all though. Let's examine the one specific item that increases a Pokemon's appeal to the audience. The scarf. This seems like a fairly reasonable and inconsequential choice, but if we look deeper, we can find that it actually wraps right back into interpretive dance. But first, costuming. Costuming is very important. While ballet often has the typical tutus and ballet shoes, which granted are a little present, overall to me the costume screams interpretive dance, albeit with the typical nonsensical Pokemon fashion thrown in. Costumes and interpretive dance often feature ribbon or loose cloth of some kind, which, if I'm understanding correctly, Correctly, is because it accentuates the freeform gestural and expressive movement associated with it. Which, if we look at the contest's spectacular costumes, what do we find? Lots and lots of loose hanging ribbon and loose cloth. Could this be attributed to Pokemon's design team just always being extra? Yes, but there's one piece of evidence I've left on the table. The item that gives a Pokemon a distinct advantage in contests is none other than a scarf. Is this not the most revelatory thing you've heard all day? Is this not the mind blow of the century is your bean not freaked okay maybe not but it is a neat detail that the one item that increases performance falls in line with what interpretive dance's typical costuming is there's one more connection to be made though freeform movement now i know that nothing says freeform movement like turn-based button pushing but for the sake of argument, I will make my case. Contests have a certain flow to them. Your opponent can place unforeseen restrictions on you, and you can adapt your strategy as the contest continues. It's this kind of adaptability, customization in the moveset, and dynamic flow that really sells the idea of freeform movement to me. Do you want to bring a Pokemon that is typically stereotyped as tough to a toughness contest, and then have it use exclusively cute moves to create an in-game meta-commentary on the unreasonable standards placed upon Pokemon from an early age to fall under specific stereotypes, you can do that. You're not gonna win, but that is the cost of true art. What really interests me though is what happened after the removal of contests during the move from Gen 4 to Gen 5. The 
because just as interpretive dance informed Broadway in real life, I think that Pokemon contests informed Pokemon musicals. The costuming, the emotion through movement, it's all there. Granted, in a very cost-effective form, but it's there and it is glorious. Finally, my Basky boy can fulfill their lifelong dream, playing a star role in a sweet soiree on Pokemon Way. Truly, destiny fulfilled.